Hey there, Gavin Gear here for makingwithmetal.com and ultimatereloader.com. We are in the middle of a content series covering my 224 Valkyrie Remington 700 bolt action rifle build. Last video we talked about creating a build sheet and understanding the Remington 700 action design. Once we've completed that, we're ready to get down to business. So in this video, we're going to talk about preparing the barrel blank. We're going to talk about getting it secured in the lathe and precisely aligned. This precise alignment is where we can take a custom gunsmithing job and rise well above even expensive factory rifles. Let's get down to business. So for both of my 224 Valkyrie builds, I'm using pre-profiled barrel blanks from Benchmark Barrels both 24 inch, both one and seven twist. And when you get a pre-profiled barrel blank, the exterior is profiled. This is an AR-15 barrel, so it has the steps, you know, for where the gas block is, that kind of thing. And for the Remington 700, it was a Sendero kind of varmint style exterior profile. And so that means that the exterior is pretty much ready to go, but they give you an inch allowance on either side. So these are 24 inch barrel blanks. They both came 26 inches overall length. That allows you to center the features of interest, the barrel shank or the step for the gas block, whatever it may be, exactly where you want it along the length. But it also gets rid of imperfections on either end. It gets you into that clean part of the bore. Benchmark barrels are hand lapped, so you're going to have an awesome surface finish on the inside and you get just the length that you want. Now, in this project, I had a near disaster. Against my better judgment, you know, Bill told me, just cut it on the bandsaw, Bill from, from rifleshooter.com. And I thought, nah, I'm going to part it off. And I was actually a little bit lazy and didn't even check for perfect alignment of the parting blade in terms of 90 degree angle to the axis of the spindle. And I was going along and I was parting off the breech end, so, you know, where the chamber is going to be. And all of a sudden, the parting blade just caught and it spun the barrel in the chuck jaws. Ugh. And it threw the pads out and it was pretty easy to polish that out. I just mounted it in a, in a truck and polished it out and decided then to go over to the bandsaw. I cut off that end and then I cut off the, the muzzle end as well so that I had my proper 24 inch overall barrel length. So I would recommend if you're not completely confident with your parting blade setup or if you have a small to mid-sized lathe where you get excessive chatter and things can grab, just cut it off with a cold saw or a band saw or some other saw where you know you're not going to run into trouble. And I was able to have my band saw in vertical mode and just run it right through, uh, which sometimes is easier than trying to <laughs> figure out a you know vice situation for clamping onto a tapered barrel, which can be a little bit tricky. So once you've got the barrel cut down to length, it's then time to get it secured in the lathe and start the alignment process. Let's walk over to the whiteboard real quick and I'll talk about the theory here. So I wanna walk through real quick uh, the methodology that I used to secure the barrel in the lathe and to align it to the lathe as well. So I've got the, the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT lathe. It's got a two inch through spindle capacity, really awesome. And I also built an outboard spider and the lathe has a shorter headstock, which is really nice because it can accommodate shorter barrels when you want to go through the headstock. I've got a four jaw chuck on the other side and I'm using pads. And when you tighten these chuck jaws with these narrow pads against the barrel blank, what it enables the barrel to do is to pivot slightly. So you can use the outboard spider to adjust basically the angle up or down and left and right and then you do radial adjustments with the chuck jaws themselves. So that would be up and down this way, and in and out of the paper that way. The goal is to get the key sections of the barrel bore that you care about running perfectly true with the lathe spindle. And what you want is a perfectly concentric neck area of the chamber and the free bore as it transitions into the actual rifled section of the barrel blank. Because what you don't want is for the bullets to be offset left or right or up or down, and then for it to engage the rifling in an uneven manner. That's gonna really rob you of accuracy. This attention to detail is what really separates your custom gunsmithing job from a factory rifle, because they don't typically do those sorts of things with factory rifles. 
Here we can look at this particular area and dial it into a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. Now what, what Gordy goes through in his video is to look at basically this, this neck area and then maybe an inch and a half, two inches ahead of that and to get this whole section aligned perfectly. I had some issues with my grizzly bar and the bushing. I was getting erratic readings when I went beyond that area. So I had to focus on kind of the neck area and then the end of the barrel. I looked with the bore scope and everything cut really nice and even all the way around. So I think it, it worked out, but uh, I think next time I'm gonna use essentially the same technique, the same idea, but with a long reach indicator where I can actually read the lands and the grooves as the barrel spins in the spindle. And that has the added advantage of if there is a, a discrepancy between the center of the lands and the center of the grooves. In other words, if the land thickness is inconsistent, you can just look at the grooves and the grooves are what really apply the press fit to the outside of the bullet and really guide it down the bore as it goes down the bore. So, I'm gonna try the long reach indicator method. It's nice because you also you don't need separate grizzly bars for kind of each class of calibers and that kind of thing. So, so this is the theory. We're gonna be working the chuck jaws at one point and then we're gonna move and then we're gonna do the outboard spider screws and then, and then each time we move the bushing in the bore, we're gonna get it to run perfectly true with, with either adjustment and then go back to the other, probably slightly off because you know we're making incremental adjustments here. And the goal is to have those two points run true as you run the bushing up and down the bore. So let's take a look at that. So here we are at the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT and I've got my four jaw chuck installed. I've got a mitted Toyo 10th indicator with the Noga magnetic base. This is a 175 pound pole model. We've got our grizzly bar with the bushing. And where we start is to open up the four jaw chuck jaws. And then we open up the set screws on the outboard spider. And then we wanna draw the barrel blank through. I don't usually worry about putting tape on it, that kind of thing, because I know I'm gonna be spinning the barrel on the lathe and polishing out the exterior surface. So if we have a minor scratch or something like that, I'm not worried at this point. If it's a pre blued barrel or something really important, you're gonna to wanna to protect the barrel somehow. I like to put a dead center in the lathe tailstock and then bring that up to the exact spot that I wanna pull the barrel blank out to. I hold the barrel blank up against the dead center and what that does is it kinda of pre-centers it. I then bring the chuck jaws up against the outside of the barrel blank and I put my pads in these are the little aluminum pads or shims that go between the chuck jaws and the barrel blank. And then I just sort of finger tighten them all the way around while I'm pulling the barrel blank out against that dead center. I've had less than a thousandth of an inch of run out between this bore as it exits the barrel blank and the lathe spindle this way on one end. So it's a very good way to get things dialed in super close really quick. Then I look on the outside and center their barrel blank in the lathe spider, tighten the screws in, just finger tight. Then we can go about the process of facing the end of the barrel blank, right? We cut it with a hacksaw or we cut it with a cold saw, whatever we did, if we cut it off the lathe, we have jagged edges and we wanna clean that up a little bit. So what I did was I tightened each chuck jaw, don't need a whole lot of tightness here and then cut the face and you can face cutting in towards the bore or out at this point because what I do after that is chase that with a center drill and the center drill just basically deburrs the bore exit so that we can get the bushing in to the bore and start to indicate it without uh, you know trouble getting that bushing in because it's a very close fit we're talking about a total kind of air gap of about two ten thousandths of an inch. You want it tight enough so that you can push it into the bore and feel some friction, but not so tight that it's gonna get stuck in the bore or scratch the bore. You also wanna put a little bit of oil on the bushing so that it can slide freely without scratching. Then you pick the points of interest and if you can do it, you want where the neck area of the chamber is and then maybe an inch and a half ahead of that further towards the muzzle. 
We'll get it dialed in with the four jaw truck jaws and then go an inch and a half in and then work the outboard spider and so on and so forth. Like I said, I had an issue with erratic readings, so I did, went on the other side and went to the outboard side where the breech would be and then right into the truck jaws, which was where the neck area was with my setup here. But what I also like to do, another little trick, is I'll start with a thousandth indicator. This one has a hardened indicator on it, a dial indicator. And I'll work the two different distances until I get them both to agree more or less with a less than a thousand, maybe about a half thousandth total indicator readout. And then I'll switch to the tenth indicator. So this is a Metatoyo tenth indicator. This is, I think, the same one that Gordy uses, and I'll have a link to these tools in the uh, video description linking to the, to the full blog post. But each graduation on here on the dial is one ten thousandth of an inch. So once we get things dialed in course with the thousandth indicator, here we're really splitting hairs, literally. <laughs> and that enables us to get it the rest of the way dialed in. And then there's the critical process of tightening the chuck, chuck jaws so that they're tight enough that they're gonna grip the barrel and the barrel won't spin in the pads that the chuck jaws are pushing down against because we're reaming, we're threading, we're cutting, we're gonna do some grooving for the thread relief. You know, we need enough pressure against the barrel so that we don't spin. But as you tighten the chuck jaws, you wanna have your bushing in there uh, I had it in the neck area and be checking with the 10th indicator so that you're making sure that you're not knocking it out of alignment by tightening it. So here's where a lot of patience is required and the result is worth it because this alignment again is what's going to set us apart from a typical high-end factory rifle even. We can do things exactly the way we want. So once you've got the barrel uh, indicated and you've tightened your chuck jaws and you've checked both points again you can go about the, the process of starting to you know turn down the tenon do your groove for your thread relief do your threads and then prepare to chamber which is what I'm going to cover in the next video but I will note that you're going to want to keep these tools handy and you're going to want to recheck your alignment of the bore to the lathe spindle after some of these operations because you know with the forces that are involved in machining sometimes it can get knocked off slightly. So again I have a full blog post write up about this, this critical part of the rebarreling chambering process and building a custom rifle which is the alignment of the barrel blank to to the spindle and I'm going to look at different techniques the long reach indicator and there's some other methods as well that you can use because I want to show you guys a variety of different ways to do things. So make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be doing the rest of the Remington 700 build. We're going to be doing the AR-15 build and then all the reloading and load development and hunting with 224 Valkyrie. Can't wait. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy machining, happy shooting, and happy reloading.